Welcome to another Sims 4 house building video. This one was made possible by EA Game Changers. Thanks so much for the early access. Now let's go ahead and get into the build. So as we're watching this build, I just want to point out my username, James Turner YT, that's sort of jumping around screen. Unfortunately, there's nothing you can do about that in these early access versions. So if that's a little distracting, I really do apologize, but I tried not to speed up this video too much and instead opted to cut out more sort of in between sections to hopefully make it not so fast. Anyway, today I'm doing a build based off of or inspired by an episode of Grand Designs because first of all, I love that show, love Kevin McLeod. And there was this particular episode where this couple had got this old cow shed and uh, they were turning into their home. And they, they uh, I think it turned out really well. It was really quite rustic in the end. Um, and right here, I'm trying to recreate the sort of roof line that it had, uh, which is not particularly possible in The Sims 4. As you can see here, I'm actually using a platform to create a flat roof section that's up higher. I really wish you could put roofs on top of platforms because that would have solved this issue of trying to create this flat roof line up higher. But I think it actually worked out pretty well. So instead of the roof going all the way down and then having the additional slope later on, I think this actually worked. There's a few little gaps you can see where the uh, sort of roof trim kind of gets cut off. So instead in those places, I've ended up just putting a bunch of like wisteria and ivy and stuff over the building to kind of cover it up. Here I'm just trying to choose trims that look the best. And as you can see, I was trying to see if uh, there was a certain, certain angle of the roof that would make it work. There wasn't. So instead, uh, like I said, I just sort of covered it up with some uh, wisteria and ivy. Now, I think they, um, the placement of all that maybe changes later on because interestingly where the roof trim sort of glitches out actually changes at some point. I don't know when, but it does. Uh, yeah, so just going around choosing all the colors. This is literally the first time I had opened up the game, uh, opened up Cottage Living and I haven't at this point had not done the Let's Play, had not played it. I just wanted to get in and build a house. And uh, this is this is what I was doing. So this is me sort of also discovering all the stuff brand new for the first time. Now, I really wanted a way to... So the house in Grand Designs that I was heavily inspired by is actually up... It's sort of on a hill and it sort of slopes down with the hill. So I wanted to try and do that with this, which obviously you can't actually build a house sort of stepping down with a hillside. So instead what I did, which we'll see in a little bit, is actually I used a bunch of platforms to create it look make it look like it was a little higher up uh, at the front of the house and then lower down the back. So it actually turned out pretty well. Now here is where I was discovering all the amazing debug items. Uh, if you haven't seen my build by overview, I suggest checking that out because I go through every single build by thing in the game, including some of the highlights of the debug menu, including that mini, which I think looks so good. I think it was like the perfect little car to park out front of this house. I also put a uh, Land Rover Defender uh, next to it as well in a second because I figured if this is like some sort of uh, more rural property, we should probably have that. Now, I spent so much time on this driveway, by the way. I cut all of it out because it was literally me just clicking, like click by click, trying to level out the driveway. It's actually sort of curving up that hillside. It took a lot of time. It took so much time to do that. But I think it turned out really well. I spent ages like painting it, trying to like paint where the tire tracks would go in. You can even see in front of that sort of Land Rover, the sort of tire tracks that turn out in front of it, kind of like, it, you know, it'd be turning around or something or, or the mini, you know, reversing and all that. And here I just wanted to do like a little sort of pergola kind of roof over the cars. I actually used the new wooden beam, which we'll, we'll get a closer look at all of this at the end of the time lapse. Uh, we'll do a full tour of the build so you can see it, uh, you know, in closer detail and all that. And uh, there's some new little uh, plants here as well that appear to just be some base game additions, uh, so like of the long grass. So I think those looked really good there. Uh, so moving inside now, at least starting to, I'm, again, like I said, I'm using the platforms to try and create some, uh, try and create the feel like it's on a on a hill, sort of sloping down with it. And uh, here, I was also just trying to, you know, make the front a little bit more interesting. Added kind of a chimney, even though there's actually no chimney there. I think it just looks good. Uh, and I was kind of going a little bit overboard with all these wall decorations here, as you can see. Like I, I put a whole bunch of them in. Uh, I think I scale it back a little bit, maybe. Uh, I think I think I do change quite a bit of it, but yeah, I'm just having fun discovering all the new items at this point because I hadn't yet. Uh, and I think it, it sort of all comes together really well in the end. I wasn't really quite sure where I was going to go for the furnishing in this build. And I was initially going to do a more contemporary one, but then I kind of, well, first of all, then I realized that everything in this pack is not really contemporary. And because we only have cottage living and base game, 
means I didn't have a lot of the other items that I love to use from other packs anyway. So I figured, well, we might as well lean into the sort of more cottage core, uh, rustic sort of life lifestyle and decoration. Though I did do these big uh, modern windows out the back because I thought it'd be really nice to have lots of glass looking out the back of the house uh, to see down that way. So this turns out being a three bedroom, two bathroom house, which I think is pretty decent. It's actually bigger than I, to I planned it to be. It was actually uh, just supposed to, <laughs> I was just gonna build a one bedroom house, but then uh, I got a little carried away. So this is what I was saying inside. There's actually three distinct levels to this house. There's like the entrance at the at the front door up there. And then you have two bedrooms up there. And then you sort of step down to the middle section, which is where the kitchen is. And then finally step down to where the living room is and also the same level that the master bedroom is. And I think, I think it works really well. I had a lot of fun with that. Uh, I, I think the, the layout in the end flows nicely and sort of all came together. I, I did spend a lot of time choosing different patterns and floorings and... Again, like I said, I wasn't really sure where I was going with a lot of this. I was just kind of chucking stuff down. I was discovering all the new stuff here. I did a lot. Oh my gosh. I actually, I believe I cut out so much with this kitchen because I was trying so many different designs and layouts and I kind of wanted... So I did this brick column here because like uh, like I was saying earlier, the, the, the house I was actually inspired off of is an episode of Grand Designs and they had this old cow shed that did have these big brick columns and supports all you know throughout it because it was an old industrial building. So I kind of wanted to bring a little bit of an element of that in here. And I, I, as you saw, I actually put a platform all the way up in it. So when you put the walls down, that column actually still stands up. So you still see it. Though I do change that because I end up turning that into like a little uh, walk-in wardrobe for the bedroom behind it. But that was the initial idea. So when you put the wall down, it was always up. So I, I, I thought it was kind of cool. Uh, this is the kitchen, obviously using all the new kitchen stuff, the new, one of the new fridges, the stove, the sink. Uh, I think it came together really well. I didn't want to go too overboard using uh, the sort of cabinets or making the kitchen feel really closed in or anything like that. It was supposed to feel quite open and, and quite airy. And I um, I think it, it, it did come out really well. Like it, it feels like there's a lot going on there, but it's not like packed to the rafters at all. I think it, I think it works quite nicely. I, I was quite happy with it. Uh, so then I also, speaking of rafters, I put in some uh, spandrels through the house just to create a little bit of a, a like aesthetic of you know holding the roof up. I would have loved to have the, the roof line visible and open to the roof above, but there's really not a good way to do that in Sims 4 without it looking terrible, so I just didn't. Um, yeah, and now we're just moving into doing some of the furnishing. Uh, so the entrance it just has like a little sideboard, and this is what I was talking about, this little walk-in wardrobe in this first double bedroom using the new bed. And uh, I was going to use the vanity there, ended up not doing it because I actually wanted a separate mirror. So I like I don't use too many of the new items in this build. Like I, I like I said, I was kind of half between wanting to do contemporary and not. But then once again, once I saw all the items, I was like, okay, I should probably <laughs> I should probably use a lot more of these items that are in it. Um, yeah, so that's kind of all coming together there. And just uh, finding a few little clutter items. This is actually like a shared bedroom for a couple of kids, uh, or at least that's how I decorated it because it has. A whole bunch of uh, children-related things. That's a great description, isn't it? <laughs> a really good description. I think I put in a dollhouse in here, maybe. And then there's little clouds, a little giraffe, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, oh yeah, the lighting right now is quite white in tone. I believe I changed that later. So, well, at least before, you know, during the build, because the, I feel like the, the light color is far too white. Uh, like it's, it's it should be warm it should be a warmer yellow in this particular house i do change that oh the bathroom i love this so i had the idea that i wanted well i wanted a bathtub this is the the master bathroom for the you know master bedroom um and i wanted the bathtub to sit in front of a window and i wanted the window directly there so you could like lay in the bath look out over the fields and again we'll get a closer look at that at the end of the video uh but I think it came out really nicely. Like you can see here, the bath sits in front of that window, which might seem strange, but again, you gotta remember we are in the countryside and there's not really any houses behind this one. So it makes sense, kind of. Uh, I, I mean, at least that's what I see in a lot of these Grand Designs episodes. They just have these giant windows from the bathroom or the bedroom out into the British countryside and it just looks incredible. So I wanted to pull a little bit, a little bit of that into here. Likewise with the master bedroom, these two huge, uh, like modern glass windows there. Let in a lot of light, have a huge view. Obviously quite different from the rest of the build. A lot of the other windows are the small, older styled ones, except for these ones and the ones at the back. So I thought, I thought it looked quite nice. And then the living room, 
furnished pretty simply using the new couch and the new armchair. Uh, where we really get into having fun uh, is actually the outside using the new chicken coop, the animal shed, uh, all the farming plots. Uh, I had so much fun doing the garden in this place. We also do a pond, which is pretty cool. Uh, oh yeah, there's a little cross stitch thing there. So you could sit here in the couch by the fire, do some cross stitching. I'll tell you what, when there's a reason to have a nice big garden that is like fully landscaped, it makes it so much more fun to actually do it. I feel like a lot of the stuff in The Sims, like, but like uh, that you do outdoors, like there's some good stuff, you know, but a lot of it, there's not really much reason to have that big of a back garden other than it might look nice, but... I really like, you know, the chicken coop, the farming plots and all that, because it gives you a reason to sort of design the garden in a way that makes sense and get all this foliage. And especially in this particular well, because it is so green and so lush, like it doesn't look out of place having almost like a jungle of bushes and flowers and stuff everywhere. Uh, so I think that's what I found a lot of fun in this build and, and the two other builds that I did, which will be coming out soon. Just doing the gardens and all that, I think, is it is a lot of fun. So down here, I do I do one animal shed and one chicken coop. Didn't go too overboard on this lot. So this is the um, 50 by 40 lot. Yeah, so I, did, I didn't go too overboard trying to cram everything in. I wanted it to, you know, actually look quite nice. Well, I tried to make it look nice. I also did this little double gate system. So you could imagine, like, it did stop, you know, chickens or the cow getting out. You know, you open the first gate, close it, then go through. Though, you know, when you look at this fence, um, it doesn't, <laughs> it's got huge gaps. I don't really understand this fence. Like, I, I love the look of the fence, but using for chicken coops, because first of all, chickens could just walk straight under it. Or at least it, they can't in the game. It does act as a full fence, but it looks like they can walk straight under it. And it also looks like uh, foxes could just walk straight under it. Uh, I was watching uh, Claire's videos about the, the couple of builds that she did in this game. And she, she was mentioning how it would have been nice to have, you know, chicken wire also attached to that fence. Like, so, you, you know, it makes sense for a chicken coop. I was like, that is such a good idea. That's what it probably should have been. Or maybe had a variant that had like chicken wire or just a different chicken wire fencing for the coops. Would have been a really nice like, little aesthetic touch to it. So here, I really liked the idea of a sloping hillside uh that had all your all your crops on it so i did these three rows here for the all the sort of oversized crops to be planted and grown sort of on this sloping hillside i wish the actual plots themselves could be sloped because that would just look so cool i kind of in my mind i was kind of envisioning like a vineyard uh on a hillside obviously much more scale uh but that's kind of what I was picturing when I was putting it on the hill. And I think it, it turned out really nice, especially once they're all placed in there and I do like a little fence around it. I wanted it to be fenced in and, and look quite nice. And I, I was working really hard as well, as you can see, to paint all these sort of pathways of where, you know, your Sims would be walking. So that the ground looks like it's more worn out and, um, and all that. So that's sort of all coming together there. I was trying to mix in. So the this is sort of wooden fence, a stone fence, and I wanted some hedging as well, because I think... That does look really nice mixed in with all of this, especially coming up the side here where you have the sort of stone fence. Like I was, so I was trying to like make the fence not look too like jagged on this hill and, and make it a little smooth. But I also wanted the plots, because the plots need to be flat so you see them actually can get in there. You know, I'm not 100% certain if those plots work. Uh, I have not tested all of them. <laughs> I will have to test them before I release this lot because obviously this is not on the gallery yet because the game isn't out. When the game does come out, I will upload this to my gallery to the username that, as you can see, has been jumping around the screen the entire time. So if you search the gallery when the game comes out with that name, you'll find this and I'll, I'll make sure to actually test everything. And so there may be a few little changes here and there if things don't work. But um, yeah, this was my first build. Uh, well, my, the very first thing I did in this pack when I got it, so... I wasn't particularly sure how all these things worked. Anyway, so that aside, I'll, I'll test all that stuff. And there may be some changes, but you can definitely download this when the pack comes out. Um, just making this place look a little bit nicer now with more foliage and decoration. I um, didn't want to completely fence in the lot. So I, I do, I think there's fences on three sides. Uh, but then obviously we have a few, you know, openings. So like here is kind of like an extension of the driveway because I figured it's like right near this edge could be useful. I don't know. It, I don't know if it makes particularly much sense because it doesn't really go anywhere, but 
it's there. You, you could drive down that way and there's like a little footpath next to it. And then I left the back of the house open as well. So you could, because it's kind of like, if you look at where this this uh, lot actually is, it's sort of in the middle of this big field. So it kind of seemed like the whole surrounding area would be owned by this house or, or something like that. That's kind of how it looks. So it kind of seems like it'd be all their property. So I kind of like left it more open in that sense rather than just doing a big box of a square fence around it. And uh, just doing a little bit more landscaping, making a little bit more green. Uh, we've got to do some furnishing. Furnishing? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I was going to say furnishing, but furnishing out here on the little deck. So we have like an outdoor table, barbecue uh, as well, just out the back here. And that is pretty much the entire build uh, all come together now. So we're going to jump in for a tour. All right. So here we are in the build. I really think that the actual like hill came out way better than I thought it was going to. I cut like all of it out, as I mentioned before, of the terrain editing of this this slope in this driveway. I mean, I don't know how realistic, especially that turn there is, and let alone how wide that gap is. But, you know, I think it still looks cool. I mean, considering the fact that these don't do anything, I think it still looks pretty cool. And I really enjoy the sort of mixed use of foundation and platforms to create all these different levels, even though we can't, you know, exactly have a house falling down a hillside. Not falling down, but, you know, sloping down with the hill. I think overall, the, the actual shape that I was inspired by came out really well. So that's that. And then uh, this, uh, here's a closer look at this little trellis as well that I spent ages doing, which again... Didn't show much of it in the video because it was just ridiculous. It's all the individual pieces and I had to like move objects them up one by one. Was it worth it? I don't know. But the good news is when you're on the ground floor and you put the walls down, you can still see it. Because the other way I was doing it, putting stuff on the level above, you never saw it. And I like to be able to see these things. So I think it looks pretty nice. And the uh, little hillside for all the planters here, I think looks great as well. And we have the nice chicken coop out the back alongside with the animal shed. So you could have a cow, a llama, up to eight chickens hanging out in there. I like the little double gate system as well. So you can, you know, go in here, close that gate, then open. Not that it makes any difference. I just think it's cool. Um, and then the little back patio as well, sitting out here. Nice alfresco dining area with a barbecue that overlooks the pond. The local pond, which has some mallard ducks and Mr. Ducksworth. Should we add some alligators? They don't fit. All right, let's not add some alligators. But yeah, that's kind of, I guess, a quick look at the outside, how it all came together. I think it's really, really fun. Now, moving inside, I think the inside is also pretty, pretty cool because... Let's jump into live mode here. So we have the sort of upper entrance level here with, I guess, the first double bedroom there and the little sort of walk-in robe thing. I mean, I didn't really know what to do with that. It could have been anything, but I just like that idea. Then across the hall is like a kid's room with two beds. I think the lighting color, I might actually just synchronize with the rest of the house. There we go. That's a bit better. So it's nice and warm and not such a cool white in there. So it's got a little dollhouse, the two beds, bookcase, you know, Nice little children's room there. And then the little bathroom is in here as well, which is, you know, nothing too out of the ordinary. Just a simple little bathroom, everything you need. And the kitchen, which I did so many different iterations on, but I think came out really well. Like it's kind of simple, but at the same time, I think it really quite, like it really works. Though I did just notice uh, <laughs> with the, uh, the, the sort of roof going on up here, there is a huge hole in it, so I believe I can fix that. Uh-oh, let me try that again. Hey, it took my couch. There we go. <laughs> yeah, as I was saying, even though the kitchen itself is kind of simple, like there's not actually that much there, I think it came out very, very well, especially with that mirror at the end there. And now with a nice completed ceiling, I think it <laughs> ties together nicely. I do really love looking down this way and seeing like the hallway with a step up throughout the house. I think that's really interesting. And likewise, turning around the other way and you see it sort of step down as you make your way through the house to make your way down a little bit. So just a little living area here with the couch and the armchair, the TV there. And then around the other side, we have, you know, a pretty, pretty simple dining area. I didn't go too overboard with that. This was, um, you know, the first build I did with this pack. It was actually the first thing I did in this pack before any gameplay. So I didn't actually know how anything worked when I built this house, like all the animal stuff, but I kind of guessed. So the master bathroom, uh, and like I was saying, this window here, I really like. I mean, I really, really like it. I think it's kind of cool. You sort of lay in the bathtub and you have this view, like that's perfect. Like, look at that. That looks, that actually looks like it could be a picture, like a painting on the wall. 
Wouldn't you like to take a bath there? I mean, just assuming, you know, you know someone's not going to be walking past that window, but like, it, lo it looks so cool. <laughs> I would love that so much. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much the inside there. Then outside around the back, had a lot of fun painting all these pathways as we saw them before. Goes around to the pond, and then around the front here as well, there's like this sort of back half of the driveway, so I guess you could sort of head out this way to this little shed thing. I don't know if you really want to drive there, but I don't know, I put that there because it kind of, it kind of fit in. Yeah, that's kind of the house. Like, I didn't really go too overboard on this side. There's plenty of space to add stuff. Like, if you actually wanted to add another animal shed, you could easily do it over here just by flattening some of the ground out. Or at the back as well. Or another chicken coop. Even around the front, you could probably find some space down here. So there's quite a lot of, quite a lot of room here. And it'd be pretty easy to expand this build to the sides as well. I did, you know, I did a few tricks with the platforms and, and this thing up here to make the roof sort of look how I wanted it to. And I, I really, I really like how well that sort of roof line actually turned out. But yeah, that is the cow shed build. I hope you like it. I was really inspired by that episode of Grand Designs. I couldn't, you know, make it exactly like how they had it. And I also wasn't really trying to do exactly like that, but I was heavily inspired by their renovation and the shape of the building that they had, the hill that it was on. I don't know, I thought it was such a cool sort of vision to make a Sims build out of. So I had a lot of fun doing it. I hope you enjoy this. When Cottage Living is actually out, uh, I'll be sure to upload this to my gallery so you can download it, obviously right now can't because the game's not out for a number of weeks still but as soon as it is i will upload it and if i forget to upload it please remind me because it'll be there <laughs> thank you so much for watching make sure to leave your comments and suggestions down below i'll see you next time and have an awesome day